going on? Welcome to the cellar. I'm Pete, and today I'm going to go over a good tutorial on time remapping. That's right, today we are masters of time. Um, it's part of being an editor, I guess, is you got to kind of be able to manipulate the time of clips. Um, so I wanted to go over my whole process exactly on how I approach time remapping, uh, all the way starting from basically what I shoot in into, into how I actually do it in Premiere. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is is what is time remapping. Um, basically, time remapping is taking the clip that is shot at a speed, a hundred percent regular real life speed that you shot it at, whatever frame rate that is, and then you're going to basically stretch it um, to either make it slower or you're going to condense it to make it um, faster. And it's a very very simple simple thing, but uh, it does. Um, require some ability to understand uh, exactly what's going on to really make it work well. So I'm going to show you basically the cheap way to do it, the easy way to do it, and then how to really uh, to make it work. So first, let's just talk about in Premiere. Um, well, let me start with what I shot. Um, this right here is a couple clips I shot from a recent event, uh, Sweet 16. And uh, I shoot at 60 frames per second, but my, um, as you can see over here, my um, settings for the sequence are not 60 frames per second um, well these, these are but normally when I finish a sequence um, it looks like it's over here and what I do is I'm gonna finish it in as you can see over here 2997 and what that does is that allows me the ability to both play um, the footage at regular speed because if you put a 60 you know 60 FPS in a 2997 it plays it at regular speed However, if you slow it down and stretch it, it does not um, create all that blur and that, you know, like uh, any uh, time remapping a clip that wasn't shot that way. It gives you the room and the pixels to be able to stretch the clip up to 40% of its value and still uh, have it look good, provided that you shot it at a good shutter speed. So I always shoot at at least a 120 um, shutter speed. I'm at 60 frames per second um, with my video, which is pretty much the least you can do and do well. Um, and then from there, uh, when you bring it into the clip, I can play it at regular speed, which is what I have it at. And then if I want to stretch it up to about 40% for slow, um, it's not going to look bad. It's not going to have all that blur in it. It's going to look like it was shot at the, uh, you know, probably around 60 frames per second. So that's what's kind of cool about the time rebounding. And the way you do that once you have these clips is very, very simple. There's a, there's a couple of different ways. Um, I have actually uh, set up a sh keyboard shortcut, Command R which basically brings up um, this, which is the clip and speed duration. However, you can also control, or if you're on a PC, PC commit, I'm sorry, no, it's uh, always control, yeah. Control or right click if you're on a PC, um, and you can go down to speed duration. That is another way to get to the same box. Once we're in um, speed duration, it's pretty simple. Uh, you have 100%, you can change it to whatever you like. So if I change this to 40%, my clip slows down tremendously. And now when we play it, it's at 40% and it still looks good because again, it was shot at 60 frames per second. If I undo that and you see it play at 100%, you see it's pretty much very, very, very simple. You can see how regular speed and then bang, slow motion. So that's basically, you have anything, uh, you have the ability to do that with the speeds. Now, let's say that you have two clips here that are on a timeline that are this far apart. So you have a certain distance apart um, between them, you can see. Okay. However, when I go to take the clip, which I set my in and out cut points to, it winds up that the clip is not filling up that space that I want it to. So what's the easiest way to do this? Now, I can go and do the same exact steps, go to my speed duration, and pull it up and try to guess what the speed will be to get there but that's kind of going to take too long and I, I'm not that good at guessing so instead we're going to use what's called the rate stretch tool right here okay the rate stretch tool which is X on the keyboard um, I'm going to press X to bring up my rate stretch tool I'm going to go to the end of this clip now I could go to the beginning if I wanted to it doesn't really matter uh, you're still uh, time remapping and stretching the clip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this clip from here all the way there Okay. And what that's going to do if we zoom in here is you're going to see that's going to bring it up to 55.62%, uh, which is still pretty good in my range. So I have it in the slow motion and it fits right in between the spot that I wanted it to fit into. Okay. So that makes that easy. 
So now we know two ways to do this. We have first we can right click and set an actual duration to say 40% or uh, something that we uh, want to get the clip in the exact uh, slow motion or speed that we want it to be. Two, we can also use the rate stretch tool, which again can be used both ways. Let's say that it was the opposite here. And let's say that the clips were only this far apart. And I wanted to use the clip, this big clip to fit into this small space right here. Um, what I could do is go here, again, press X to grab my rate stretch tool, and then I'm going to stretch it out all the way over here so that, bang, it goes in and fits right there. And you have that nice, fast motion, you know, it kind of need to tie into some music or something like that. So let's undo. Now, those are all pretty much the simple ways to take one clip and then you know, take it into one particular speed, change it so it's all the same speed. However, what happens when you have a clip where you want to start out with, you know, the cool shots where you start out with some fast motion and then you go right into slow motion. So let's let's take a look at that. Um, let, let's take a look at the cheap way to do it first, the way I used to do it, and then I'll show you the best way to do it so you can really get that smooth motion. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the clip. And let's find a cut point here. Let's say there is our cut point. I'm going to Nice and easy cut by pressing, I have a keyboard shortcut set to cut. So bang, I cut right here. And now let's say I go to here and I change this to 40%. Okay, bang. Now you'll see that the clip plays and bang, kind of looks kind of cool. Because of the cut point, it goes into slow motion. However, it's kind of cheap because you can see right here, it kind of just goes from fast, one speed to one speed, one speed to one speed. There's no interpolation to tell it to kind of slow down because it's not a uh, you know like you would stretch a dissolve or you would stretch another transition you can't do that with the time remapping so the best way to really do this is to not time remap the clips by cutting them and making one one speed and one the other instead we're gonna actually get into the effects panel so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click well, let me start out by saying we want to start out whenever we're going to use the time remapping on the effects panel. We want to start out by having it at 100% so that if I bring up my speed and my duration, it comes to 100%. I want to make sure I do that before I start messing with the time remapping. Otherwise, I've seen some glitches in Premiere when you have a clip time remapped uh, using the clip speed duration down to a certain percentage and then you try to time remap on the effects control. It gets very strange. So remember, make sure it's always at 100% before you start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to set my keyframe right when the hands are high. Okay, and I'm going to go to my effects control panel. By clicking on the clip, it brings this effects control panel up, up here. Time remapping and speed. I'm going to open those windows. And what you're going to see here is my you know, marker is exactly where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to click to bring a keyframe up on my CTI. And then I'm going to sh have this little... Um, I don't know, it almost looks like a Superman logo or something. And you can see that it's kind of split in the middle. And that allows me to stretch this out. So what I like to do is I like to say, okay, here's where I want it to kind of slow down and end. So I'm kind of going to go in the middle here. So I'm going to stretch it out one way, and then I'm going to pull the other one to stretch it out a little way. And you see we got this little handle here, which we're going to get to in a second. But first, I want to show you how this works. So what I'm basically saying here by setting this keyframe is that I'm going to have everything on this side of the keyframe be at one speed. Then it's going to change right here. And then when it's done here, it's going to be at the other speed, whatever speed I set it to. Right now, there is no change because it's all at 100%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, bang, we're going to come up here. Then we're going to go to here. Okay. So I'm going to start off at 100% speed. Then I want it to transition into 40% speed. So I'm going to bring my CTI over. You want to get a little bit of weight from the keyframe because if you're real close to the keyframe and you start to pull this, you're going to actually wind up in the keyframe um, because of time stretching and it's not going to allow you to set the proper value over here. You'll, and the way to notice that is you'll start to see percentages that aren't in even a, a whole number. So instead of being like when I stretch this, instead of being 40% or these numbers, if I undo, if I go here, if you start to stretch it, if you're in this, you'll start to see that all the percentages are um you know they're up on the thing so you can tell that it's not stretching at a uh, you're in the middle of the transition that's what that basically means so let's undo that so let's go back here I'm away from the transition I stretch down to 
40 percent bang okay now you'll notice i get pretty much the same thing except i get a little slightly bit smoother motion nothing too crazy and the reason why it's not too crazy is there's a couple things i want to set here one is i want to stretch this out a little bit more all right so and i wanted to start a little earlier and kind of get there bang yeah that looks much better Okay, now I want to smooth out the motion. The way we're going to get back to this little graph right here. And you can see there's two little balls that when I put my mouse over, you can see a little circle as I'm hovering over it. It kind of changes. Once I get to that position, what I want to do is I want to pull this. And I want to look, pull it all the way. You see how it turns that way? And what you could do is, it's hard to see probably on this tutorial because of the size of this. But I'm going to tilt the screen this. Give me one second. So check this out. Do you see this, how it's changing here? And it goes, and that's actually going to change my speed. I like to get it kind of smooth, not this smooth because that's kind of a drop off, but something along like this, okay? And that's going to give me a much smoother motion. So let me take that back down and watch. Boom. And if I want to make it even smoother, what I would do is start here, bang, and just strength, uh, lengthen out my transition, okay? And I could even pull this out a little bit further. And a little bit further and you can see it's gonna give me a little bit of a, a smoother transition bang I could actually cut it this way and I mean literally we could play with this all day but you can see that it's not as abrupt getting into the motion that's what's going on here I'd rather start this way I want to end yeah right there that's what looks better I want to end there boom see that's much better so there you go. And you can tell now it's a much smoother motion when she goes into it. Now, the only way to get a better motion than this, a smoother motion, is to actually go into After Effects, which I am in the middle of uh, stabilizing a clip right now. That is time remapped. But it is actually the best way to do it. In After Effects, you can pull up even a, a much more intuitive graph that looks kind of like with the inter interpolation graphs. So you can kind of actually really go to the chart and really, you know, work those curves to get some really smooth motion effects. Um... So that's basically the key to time remapping. Now, someone may be asking, hey, let's say I get to here and I want to go back to 100%. You know, it's the same exact thing. I would set a keyframe here. I would stretch it out a little bit like this. Now, if I put the marker here, you'll see we're at 40%. I put the marker here, we're at 100%. So if I go on this side of the transition, I'm still at 40. You can see I'm going to want to bring that back up to 100%. And what you can do is you can see over here is where you watch where it changes. So if I undo that again, watch this over here. I'm going to bring it back up to 100%. And bang. Now, same thing here. I go to this graph. I'm going to play with my balls. I know how that sounds. And boom. And we got a little bit of a motion going back in. So now what happens is it gets slow for a second. And then boom, we're back on the dance floor. And that's how you get some kind of cool cool effects uh, and are able to manipulate time. And I can't tell you how important that is as an editor, especially when you're cutting to music and you're trying to match up those beats. Um, the ability to have time transition and make it smooth and, and really adds to your clips and gives you a lot more footage than you originally had. Because if you're only working off the footage at one speed, you know, you, you really don't have much to work with. But once you're able to be able to time remap some clips and add some different motions and, and different speeds it really can add to the music just like music has different speeds different rhythms and different tempos so hope you learned something with the time remapping hit me up for any questions otherwise this is pete from the seller i'll talk to you soon